scientific concerns with reaction time date back to the end of the 18th century. Astronomers, attempting to establish the exact transit times of stars, found that different astronomers gave slightly different times, even under exactly the same conditions. A particularly notable example occurred when the Astronomer Royal of England, Neville Maskelyne, fired an assistant named Kennebrook in 1796 because he found that Kennebrook's transit times were as much as a half second slower than his own. Maskelyne assumed that Kennebrook had simply been sloppy, but as was discovered later, it turns out that different people react to events with different speeds. The Prussian astronomer Friedrich Bessel was one of the first to take up the topic, dubbing it the personal equation, the name by which it would be known for the next century. In 1820, he compared himself with another experienced astronomer named Walbeck. Bessel found that his own observations were, on average, more than a second earlier than Walbeck's. There were serious technological constraints in accurately measuring the differences between people's reaction times in the first half of the 19th century. In 1840, however, the British inventor Charles Wheatstone developed an electromagnetic chronoscope that was said to be able to measure times to within the one thousandth of a second. It was used not only for human reaction times, but to measure the speed of artillery shells. At this time, in order for an astronomer to record his own reaction time, he had to note when a star passed a hairline in the telescope while simultaneously listening to the tick of a clock. Pursuing the possibility that this coordination of eye and ear might be the source of the problem, the Swiss astronomer Adolf Hirsch discovered in the early 1860s that the time it takes to react to a visual stimulus, such as a light, is about one-third longer than it is to an auditory stimulus. This discovery was made possible by refinements made to the Wheatstone chronoscope by Hirsch's mechanic, Matthias Hipp. Called the Hipp chronoscope, it would soon become a standard piece of equipment in physiology and experimental psychology laboratories in Europe and North America. Working essentially as a laboratory assistant in Heidelberg in the early 1860s, Wundt did not have access to such advanced equipment and had to resort instead to his pendulum clock device. In 1865, the Dutch ophthalmologist Franz Donders and his graduate student Johan Jakob de Jaha investigated how much additional time it would take someone to react if they were forced to make a decision between two different kinds of stimuli or two different kinds of responses. They interpreted the difference between the simple reaction time and this more complicated one as the amount of time it actually takes a person to make a simple decision. In short, the speed of thought itself. Donders, however, did not use the hip chronoscope. Instead, he used an older technology, the chronograph, in which a tuning fork is used to inscribe regular intervals on a piece of paper attached to a spinning cylinder. Although it was more difficult to glean reaction times from a chronographic record, it is said to have been more accurate than the hip chronoscope. Nevertheless, Wundt soon replaced his pendulum clock with the hip chronoscope and combined it with variations on Donder's subtraction technique. This allowed him to further fractionate reaction times into what he took to be their psychological components, sensation, perception, and apperception. Indeed, the reaction time experiment, a phrase coined by one of Wundt's students, rapidly became the fundamental procedure of experimental psychology. Wundt's particular research problem, where one sense modality was pitted against another, became known as the complication experiment. In the 1870s, as Wundt began to acquire more prestige with his professorships first in Zurich and then in Leipzig, he was able to build special equipment for his complication experiments. Thank you.